Hello, Galaxy! I'm Chris Perillo. Not live this time, even though I unboxed my iPhone 8 Plus live a few minutes ago. Uh, I did not boot it up for the first time in that video because I wanted to record my first impressions here with you now. Not so live. I also took time to live stream the Apple TV 4K live for everybody. So you got two videos live for me yesterday. It was a lot of fun to interact with everybody. We'll have to do a lot of that more often. What do you think? Should I get back into doing live videos again? I think I may find another studio to do it within, though, if I decide to go that route. Let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time. Power button. Did I not hold on to it long enough? I did. Okay, just took a second or so to, to boot up. Uh, there's the classic logo. Looks pretty clean. Screen looks normal, right? You know, you, you obviously have a, a screen that isn't going to blend in with the chin or the forehead. Hola! Ah, speaking Spanish again. Let's see here. Allo. Uh, let's see. What is, oh, I don't know what it says there at the bottom. Let's go ahead and swipe. Okay, swipe over. No. Can I press the button? Ah, press the button. Okay. English. U.S. Quick start. If you have an iPhone or iPad running iOS 11, bring it nearby to sign in automatically. If you want, you can also set up this iPhone manually. Oh, that's pretty cool. I really like that. Let's see here. So I'm going to hold it next to the other phone. Okay, I'm, I'm close to it, but apparently I can't be recording a video at the same time. That's, that's what I'm doing. I'm literally right on top of it. Nope, I guess it doesn't want to work, or maybe I'm doing it wrong. Or it could be that I'm recording a video with the other phone. Set up manually. This is the third time I've tapped, fourth. Set up manually. The fifth time I tapped. Okay. I'm going to... Activate it here, theoretically. It says it may take a few minutes. It does warn me that it may take a few minutes to set up the, uh, the phone. Sorry, I didn't realize that would be knocking into the desk there. Could not activate. You know, I may need to do something else before I continue with the process. Yeah, could not activate phone because the activation server cannot be reached. Try connecting your iPhone to iTunes to activate it or try again over the cellular connection in a couple of minutes. Try again. Huh. Well, uh, this is my initial impression. Hmm. Possibly not Apple's problem, though. And I definitely got signal. Wow. Do I have to pause everything and come back to it? I may have to do that, folks. So if I do, expect a, a jump here in the video. Really, Apple? You gonna you gonna make me edit video? Huh. I even connected to Wi-Fi this time. Isn't that what they do in the movies? They, they hold their phone up to try to get signal? Is that, is that what I'm doing? I feel like I'm, I'm out in the woods here. Kind of am in Seattle, in the woods. Apple could fix this in software, but that's none of my business. Oh, yay! Finally, no. Huh. Maybe not. Okay, it says, in the meantime, feel free to explore your iPhone's features in the App Store. Okay. I guess that's what I'm going to do. Touch ID. I will continue. Now, so far, and it, it may be that I haven't been paying too much attention to it, but uh, to this point, I have not seen any frame drop or skip, necessarily. Adjust your grip. Okay, I'm going I'm, to... I'm setting up Touch ID. It is, it is pretty simple. Pretty straightforward, even though I am probably going to nuke this device uh, and, and reset it with everything. I'm just doing the initial impressions. So, let's see here. Skip all this, set up later. Don't use. I did see a frame skip there. In that last animation when it went over, there was a frame skip. Slick animation there going into the home screen. Whoa, that was jank. Whoa. I just opened the home icon, right? You know, one of their default apps. Obviously, this is all default. You can't necessarily see it because I'm only able to record at 
30 frames per second on the front facing camera. But if I was recording in 60 frames per second, you would have absolutely seen that jump, not only on the home, but also on books. Okay, let's just open up something simple like wallet. Yep, it dropped a bit. Yeah, sure, why not? It did drop. Not on the exit, though. News. News was a little easier in the open. Preparing your news. I, that's kind of sad. That's the one thing I didn't want to see on an iPhone 8 Plus. I don't care about their benchmarks. I don't care if they say they're the fastest one on the planet. Dude, that, you, know, you know who did that? Apple, before Steve Jobs came back to him. Not that he's ever coming back again. There's actually, it's a video, and I will link it. I will link it in the description where he's basically talking to, to a group of people saying, we're not going to talk about how fast, we're not going to talk about this, that, and the other thing, specs, specs, specs. And he said, that's not Apple. It's not going to That's not gonna win anybody over. Okay, scrolling is smoother on the second scroll slightly. That's something that one would argue could be fixed in software, but if it was fixable in software, they would have fixed it. These are problems that we've seen, you know, pretty much from uh, iOS 7 beyond. They've yet to really uh, put fit and finish and uh, polish specifically on their animations. Um, for the most part, it's 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 ooh smooth. And then I scrolled, o swiped over, and it was like <coughs> second swipe better, third swipe better, first one. <coughs> that's that's iOS though. I mean, I don't. I'm not making it up. I, I know what I see. I've been seeing it for years. Oh, man. iOS. See, this is the thing. And I'm not the first person to put... I, I, just, I want to throw this out there right now because I have to, especially at this moment. John Prosser from Front Page Tech did an amazing video, and I was pretty much in lockstep with him, where he's saying this isn't about Apple versus Android. This is not... Or iOS versus Android, or Apple versus Google, or, you know, iPhone versus you know, products from company X who makes an Android product. It's about Apple versus Apple. Like this is, that's the problem is Apple is literally fighting its past with what we see here. This is just, it's the fact that we're still doing, okay, wait, I did. I think I need to change another setting. This drives me nuts. I lightly touch the button and it says you have to press it again after you touch it. That's going to get annoying. Didn't really think the animation was very clean in swiping away from the lock screen there either. Pretty unoptimized. Swiping down seems fine right now. Uh, widget scrolling seems fine. Now, ooh, there was a skip at the bottom. When I got to the bottom, then went even further with the rubber band effect, it jumped. So yeah, the, the iOS uh, animation slop is still prevalent. I would assume iOS 11 slop is still there. Layout issues that have been uh, documented, very well documented. If you follow me on Twitter, you know exactly what I'm talking about if you don't see it. Because um, I've been retweeting a, a lot of you. So it, it is a little jarring to see those problems not mitigated by faster hardware. Um... It's Apple versus past Apple, honestly. Um, oh, news pulled in. Here's, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to it, but sometimes if I have a laundry list of widgets to edit, that was a smooth animation, it skips on scroll. It did not skip on scroll this time on an initial scroll down uh, in, in widgets. This is where I've seen issues specifically with uh, um, uh, other iPhones. Pretty smooth scroll for the most part there. Which, again, is just indicative of how the software is not optimized. As in animations are not optimized. Or the, the phone is just... The software is throwing so much at the hardware, the allegedly fastest phone on the planet can't keep up. Or one of the fastest phones on the planet can't keep up. Which goes back to what I've been saying. Specs are irrelevant. I don't care. I, I'm telling you, and I, this is a video that I'm going to be doing at some point in the very near future. I was using my Nexus 6P, which hasn't seen a lot of heavy use, Android Oreo on the Nexus 6P in so many ways performs better on average than uh, in, in, in just regular app using, and even though I haven't taxed it necessarily, than I would say my iPhone 7 Plus. But instead of doing an Android Oreo versus iPhone or iOS 11 uh, with the iPhone 7 Plus, I was waiting until I got the iPhone 8 Plus. So that's going to be a software comparison I'm going to be doing, and I'm telling you, it's just, uh, for anybody who says Android has this problem, it's A, it's not as bad, and B, it's not as prevalent specifically on current flagship devices. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of maddening and saddening all at the same time. Let's open up. Where's music? Music, music. Oh, in the bottom. Looking for your music? No. <laughs> I, music you purchased. Oh, then I see the icons populated afterwards. That's weird. Why wouldn't they populate at the beginning? Like, they, pop, they, they popped in after I loaded it. Weird. For you. Now, this may take a while because of my connection, but I'm going to see what it... It probably says, you need to subscribe! 
delete. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to, I think it's, it's pushing me to a subscribe prompt. Again, I don't want to speak to the speed in relation to, to, to the connection I'm using versus the speed of the device. Oh, this is really not intuitive screen waiting to see what's happening right now. Let's go ahead and exit out. Ooh, that was an awkward fade. That was definitely not a clean 60 frame per second animation in pulling up the menu. Second time I pulled up the uh, task screen menu, it was a lot smoother. So it was dropping, it was basically skipping jank. iOS, I'm telling you, uh, iOS has got jank. iOS has more jank than Android. I'm here to say it. They, and I'm talking specifically about flagship devices today. Uh, I don't want to hear about Android devices being slower because th they're not. Their software is optimized. In fact, I will go as far as to say this about iOS and Android. Given my initial experience, my initial impressions with iOS 11, specifically on the iPhone 8 Plus, fresh out of the box, first boot, I believe that Android makes older, new versions of Android make older Android phones seemingly better and more responsive versus newer versions of iOS, which actually do more to harm older devices. iOS 11 on Diana's iPhone 6S has actually introduced speed issues that I'd never seen before on that device. Like, it, problems. Like, outright, just perform Like, the app, apps actually pause. They launch, and then they pause before you can use them for, like, one or two seconds on an ample device. So, you know, I, I understand the way Android's been done. Updates don't always get to push to flagship devices. All the more reason why I'm, I'm fascinated to see what's happening with, with, was fascinated with the Nexus, now fascinated with the Pixel. Um, but even newer Android devices don't have these same problems as iOS does. It's, it's, an, it's, it's a myth uh, that, that Android performs less. Now, in terms of software updates, I can't argue with the OEMs um, in, in potentially the other relationships in the industry. But the Pixel always gets it. Like, the Pixel always gets updates, just like the Nexus always got updates. Uh, moreover, with Project Treble coming down the pike, a lot of those issues that you may have had as iOS user going to Android don't make performance one of them because that's not it. Updates is going to be a thing of the past if, if the industry adopts Project Treble with Android Oreo moving forward. Wow, that's kind of sad that that I saw the, the kind of kind of a hickey hickey jicky herky jerky. The, the animation just doesn't seem fluid. Animations and swiping, even after it's cached, it's fluid ish. But it just doesn't seem to be... On ProMotion, this is a lot cleaner. On iOS, specifically. I can't compare it to any other platform. I, only ca I can only compare apples to apples. I, ca I can only effectively compare it that way. And I know that's difficult when I say that Android's this and Android's that. But I think it's, it's just something that I keep hearing as an excuse over and over again. And it's, 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 it's wrong. People are absolutely incorrect. I think iOS shows its lack of software quality control with every passing revision, making older iPhones and iOS devices like iPads work less and less as cleanly as they did early on. It has nothing to do with anything apart from software. And I don't want to hear Apple can't keep up with scale. They got the money to hire the right people. Can they and will they? That's the question. I believe Apple's going to be Apple's worst enemy with this. It's hubris is going to get in the way. Uh, this is the stuff I'm tired of, man. This is the stuff that's not mitigated in iOS. If you thought the iPhone 8 was going to be any better than the 7 for performance, no. iOS has still got a long way to go. And here's the problem. You've got to live with this version of iOS for the next year. Y you do. You'll get incremental upgrade uh, updates. Things may improve over this cycle of iOS, but then you're going to start all over again with problems with iOS 12. Apple's not, they don't need to change anything because keep, people keep thinking the value of the iPhone here is not uh, uh, connected with the value of the iPhone here. It's the software that matters. It's the software, 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 not the hardware. It's the software that's valuable. So my initial impressions of the software are same old, same old. That's not an accolade. Um, pretty clean. Oh, you got some flair. See, anybody who's complaining about flare on other phones, they don't know that it, a lot of phones suffer from it. It's just how it works. But there's definitely flare. From the light up there, I'm getting flare straight on. And all you need to do is just, you know, basically put your hand over it somehow. That's Someone needs to come up with, like, an iPhone shade or something because that'll mitigate it. Now, see, if you can see the difference, can you see the difference there? That's all you got to do to mitigate it, even though my hand's kind of in the way. That's how I've mitigated it in the, uh, before. That's not an iPhone problem. I'm just saying that if you see someone, oh, and a flare in this device, it's right there. It's, it's just, it happens everywhere. But I like the fact that I'm in low light and it doesn't seem, it seems to be smoother here instead of choppy 
as I'm panning around, not using the video mode, just the photo mode, which is where it would normally be choppy. Just as smooth with video. Assumingly, yeah, definitely just a smo slow and uh, a slow mo, or just a smooth and slow mo portrait. Yeah, portrait camera. Uh, I can't do the front facing camera because I, I I haven't bought into the whole idea that the only way to bring you cutting edge technology was to make this fugly uh, inclusion. Um, speaking of, let's see if I can pull this up. Uh, on, on this, I can't remember if I was on this computer or another one. I'm talking about my iPad, which yes, is is absolutely a computer. Uh, someone tweeted me a, po a picture of usable space. There we go. Thank you. Opaque. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up your tweet here because it's relevant. Thank you, A, for tweeting and following. But uh, opaque or at iPhoneist11 says Chris Perillo. What's the point of going all screen? He, he links off to WebKit, which is Apple's uh, 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 effectively a web development project, open source, as it was in the very beginning before Apple picked up pick it up. This is the safe area for web pages now. So you, you're talking about the iPhone 10. I realize I'm doing an iPhone 8 Plus first impressions, but if you're talking about the screen being one of the bigger values of the iPhone 10, this is perfect timing. Look at that. That's the safe area. So that screen can't effectively be used by web pages. That's what Apple's saying. For it to be optimized for the iPhone 10. So if you're cutting out the value of using that screen real estate just to have the screen real estate there partially used, what, are you not going to browse the web anymore on your phone? What, what, what again was the point of, of not obscuring the, the, the visual of this, this, uh, this area here, the sensor housing? Why? If that's a safe area anyway, why aren't you obscuring it? God, I'll give Essential one thing, at least they did. I mean, you know, you talk about screen. This screen is ample. It works. I can use the entire screen for anything and everything. I don't have to wait for a web developer to come in. I'll give the iPhone 8 Plus that. There's a first impression. I can use the whole screen. Granted, it's still as unoptimized as ever. It may get better over time. May. Eh, it's iOS. Don't expect a better iOS experience outright. Um, I haven't necessarily had a chance to charge it, plug it in. Uh, but it, it does have inductive charging, not wireless charging. It's inductive. There's still a wire involved, uh, with inductive charging. Uh, but I, as I pointed out in my, uh, iPhone, uh, video that I just did unboxing this live, uh, I've been using on the phone that I'm using to record this video. I've been using a, a case from Mophie that allows inductive charging. So if you want inductive charging without paying a premium for it outright and replacing your phone, uh, you can get case solutions that work very, very well and, and are fully Qi compatible. Uh, I, I do want to... Uh, do I have one of the batteries here? I don't. I want to try... I wish I would have... Oh, and Diana's not here. Oh, I want to try it. I really want to see if it works on a charger. Can you give me a moment? G give me one moment. It works! Aren't you happy that I didn't yell there? Uh, I set it on the, the plate that I've had plugged in for quite some time, and it worked without uh, needing anything. So it is definitely compatible with existing accessories, including the accessory that I use on my uh, iPhone 7 Plus. But outright, I'm not seeing and perceiving any major differences, uh, subtle differences, between the iPhone 7 Plus and the 8 Plus. Um, I've never had a problem with the design. I guess some people think it's horrible. <laughs> well, it's, it's boring. Dude, what do you what do you do you use the phone by looking at its back all the time? Or do you use the phone by looking at its screen all the time? Just just a question. So I love the design. Uh I, I I'm I'm accustomed to having a, a phablet sized uh, device. Um but I've already said everything that, that I wanted to say and seen everything that I was hoping that I wouldn't see in this faster device. <sighs> Uh, I'll be trying the camera. I'll be recording video um, after I get it set up and going. Uh, after a, a week's worth of use, I'll be doing a separate video, my initial review of the iPhone 7, but I'll be labeling it as such. I also want to do kind of a potentially a one-month review if anything had, had, has changed with the experience of uh, the iPhone 8 Plus over all that time. Plenty of other videos uh, that I would like to do, but man, it's, it's, it's iOS. Bless Apple's heart. <laughs> That's what you got to live with for the next year if you're going that path, but we'll see. I think after a week's time, I, I'll get back to you and let you know whether I believe that the, the, the iPhone 7 Plus is, or the iPhone 8 Plus is an upgrade from the 7 or who should be in the market for it. Um, so stay tuned uh, for that as I continue to do these videos for everybody. Thank you uh, for your time and your attention. Uh, I do appreciate it. Um, everything that you're doing and in, in interacting and in, in 
keeping me motivated. Sometimes I need that motivation, and it seemed for a long while that uh, no one was motivated. I'm motivated if you're motivated. I love you. I appreciate you. And may the force be with you.